and happy Sabbath. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And so I'm here in Georgia with my family and my cousins. Good morning, Good morning. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. I'm Josiah. I'm Isabella. I'm Kaylin. I'm Jaden. And we want to welcome you to Thank you for joining via YouTube or Facebook. I hope you enjoy all four. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, so I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. A great Thanksgiving. And so please chat in the comments down below and tell us how, how your Thanksgiving was. And again, thank you for joining us on YouTube and fa on, or on Facebook or wherever you are. And I just want to say, Happy Sabbath. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship. We pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving break, and it, we are glad that you decided to join us for worship today. If you are here for the first time, second time, or just want to let us know that you are worshiping with Berean today, text the word welcome to 601-258-4040, and let us know that you are in the house amen 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 we want to continue to invite you to share your uh, children's stories and family greetings with us uh, just take your phone out turn it sideways and record those family greetings those children's stories and send them or share them to bereanmm at gmail.com and we will be glad to see them every sabbath morning is our sabbath school at 9 45 our zoom link number is 601353 2750 and if you don't have the password send us a text or email check with one of our members and they will be glad to share that with you amen 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 our prayer meeting resumes this uh coming wednesday night it is 6 p.m for both our uh, adult service and our youth service so come on out on jump on zoom and join us as we worship together as we praise together and mostly as we pray to together amen 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 our women inspiring women continues uh today at 6 p.m um please uh jump on our zoom link all of our ladies to share in the women inspiring women uh, their monthly meeting is on sunday december 6th that's next sunday at 2 p.m on zoom and sister moore wanted to know that if you let you know that if you still need to get your t-shirts make sure that you contact her in order to get those t-shirts amen 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 i bring group life uh our ministries are forming you should have heard from uh, one of our elders uh, to let us know which group you are in if you uh, don't know uh, text the word group life no space in there to 601-258-4040 and uh, we will let you know which group which group that you are in amen we want to thank everybody for coming out for our uh, drive through Thanksgiving dinner man we serve uh, so many families everyone was just blessed in order uh, um, bless um, that they were able to get a hot plate and a smile come on somebody say man we want to thank all of the volunteers those who cooked those who came on out for joining us for our Thanksgiving dinner amen those are our announcements we're going to share uh, just a few highlights from the week so God bless you and we will see you in a minute to the church and to the church family and they would appreciate everything that you all are doing. Happy th 
Thanksgiving to the church. It's been a blessing to come here to mingle with people and to know you and kind of with some good people. Thanksgiving to the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church family and friends. Happy Thanksgiving. I didn't cook. And I'm uh, blessed because I didn't know it was going on and I passed by and I said, let me go see what's going on. I came over here trying to find out it's some hot food that I can eat today and I'm satisfied with that. And thank God and I uh, have to thank you to everybody. Thanksgiving, we just want to give God some thanks, amen. amen. Thank you for our families, thank you for our jobs, thank you for our health and our strength. Thank you just for, Lord, you just being who you are. And so you can sing along with us. The song is, Oh, Give Thanks Unto the Lord. Oh, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good yes he is good oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy he is worthy worthy for he is good, yes he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. Oh give thanks, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes he is good. Oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, Can this side good. sing it? Oh. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I believe this side's going to beat you guys, and we're small in number. Yes, Come on, this side. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Everybody sing. No music. Here we go. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. All over the building. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord. For he is good. Come on, everybody. Everybody, come on, everybody. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good. 
good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. For he is good. Yes, 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 he is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to have this opportunity to worship you on another Sabbath day. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with us. We ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins. We ask that you would strengthen us in the areas where we are weak. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, fill us uh, with your Holy Spirit. We ask for special blessings on this, your Sabbath day. We ask, Lord, that you would give us clear minds and strong bodies. We pray, Lord, for health. We pray that you would bless our families. We pray, Lord, that you would bless those who have various struggles. Lord, some of us are struggling financially. We pray that you would bless as only you can. Lord, some of us are having health challenges. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the healing that only you can provide. Some of us, Lord, are struggling with various personal issues. We ask, Lord, that you would come in and be the solution that we need. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless those who are sick and who are shut in. Lord, we pray that you would bless those families who are affected by this COVID-19 crisis. We pray that you would bless the people, Lord, who have the virus. Bless the family members of those who are suffering and who have died. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to do the things that are needed so that we can remain healthy and safe. Most of all, Lord, help us to have a complete and full trust in you. We ask, Lord, that you uh, would be with the message uh, that is going to be delivered today. We pray, Lord, that you would be with your manservant who is to deliver the message. And we pray, Lord, that you would open the hearts of all of us who are listening. Give us, Lord, the words that we need to sustain us in these difficult times. We would also like to pray, Lord, that you would do something special in our lives that you would save us when you come that you will do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves bless us for we ask this in jesus name amen Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Hi, I'm Emma. And I am Caleb. And, and we, we have, have an important, important message for you today. 
During this time of pandemic, many are suffering. Some have lost jobs. Others are going hungry. Many people are stressed. And many are wondering what is going to happen next. We want to tell you today, you don't need to be stressed. Because the Bible says, God can give us perfect peace. If we heal our mind on Him, Isaiah 26 verse 3, you don't need to be stressed out. This just tells us that Jesus is coming very soon and He's going to take us home to heaven where there will be no more pain, no more hunger, no more tears, no more stress, no more pandemic. We will all be happy and healthy there. God will change us and God will create a new world. Do you believe it? You have to have faith to see it. Faith in God's Bible. That's where it tells us all this good news. So don't let this pandemic make you forget about Jesus. I lose sight of Him. Instead, let it bring you closer to Him. Read your Bible more. Pray more. We can have confidence in the Bible. Cling to God's promises. The Bible says in Psalms 91, 6 and 7, that when the pestilence come, and a thousand shall fall at thy side, and a thousand at thy right hand, it won't come near you. Isn't God promises sweet? That's a promise for our time. And if God promised it, I have faith that He will do it. He never breaks His promises. Because He is God. And God will never let us down. So today, we want to remind you, Jesus is coming very, very soon. Yes, very soon. And we must be ready. Ready to meet Him. Ready at His second coming. Ready today. But how? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 42, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. We must watch. Watch for the signs. Like this pestilence. Yes, this pandemic is a sign. Yes, a sign to get ready. So if you have been watching and you realize that Jesus is telling us to get ready because he's coming soon, then we must build our faith. Because the Bible says that faith is the victory. 1 John 5, 4. And we are safe by grace. Through faith. Ephesians 2, 8. How do we build our faith? We must spend time in the Bible. Romans 10, 17. Since we have been in lockdown, we've been staying home a lot. But because of that, I've read my Bible more. We've finished the New Testament already. One chapter a day. Keeps the devil away. Why don't you read the Bible with us today? Let's build our faith. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Let's do it every day so we can be ready for Jesus today. And then we don't have to be afraid. This is the peace that we can have that rides above the storm. God bless you and see you next time. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. It is our giving time, the time when we um, focus on uh, giving thanks for what God has given to us. Amen. Uh, your gifts and your faithfulness are so important, and we just want to thank you for that faithfulness. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to mail your tithe and offering in, um, P.O. Box 11216, Jackson, Mississippi, 39283. Amen. Amen. We also have our Adventist Giving app on, on Apple as well as Android. Um, make sure when you get there, you look for Berean SDA Church in Jackson, Mississippi and sign up and you can give uh, electronically. Lastly, we have our drop off times every week where you're able to come and uh, and drop those tithes and offering off. Uh, whichever way you give, uh, just make sure that you are as faithful to God as he has been to you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for blessing us uh, to be able to receive. Uh, and in this season, God, we thank you for allowing us to be able to give. Continue to bless the gifts and the givers in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you.
singing hands up, hands up, and hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name. God, we lift your name. Singing our hands, say, hands up, hands up, and hearts open. Hearts open.
Let all the other names fade away till there's only you. Let all, let all the other names fade away. There's no other name that's higher than the name of Jesus. Let all the other names fade so away. Till there's only till Can you join us? Cut the music. Say, let all the other names. Let all the other names fade Let all the other names fade away. Till there's only, till there's let only all the you. other names. Let all the other names fade That's away. That's how say Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is preaching time. Um, the word we're about to preach today is one that we have shared uh, in part in a couple of different um, venues, um, but I wanted to share that full word today. And so let the word of God bless you today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for uh, allowing us to come together. Now, God, we ask that you would bless the word, bless the people of God. Thank you for this season. In the name of Jesus, amen. This morning, our message is entitled Monday Morning Master. Monday Morning Master. Amen, amen. We, 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 we tend to, um, in fact, we, we, we're in a season where we are missing worship. Come on, somebody. Um, uh, we can remember the times when we were, um, when we were, uh, in church and, and and just being able to fellowship and being able to praise God, we, we enjoy uh, and we have learned to enjoy more and more uh, those times when we come together uh, for worship. And we, we didn't know how much we enjoyed it uh, until we have missed uh, those times of coming together. In fact, I, I see folk come on now who from the looks of it looks like uh they ain't been to, to nobody's church no time and they come to me and they say pastor they say rev they say man we can't wait till we get back to church we 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 just want even hey, a good time come on we 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 have learned um the value of it but in today's message uh we want to look at what faith looks like beyond uh, beyond the worship service if you have your bibles we are in the fifth chapter of the gospel of luke fifth chapter of the gospel of Luke. Let's consider what the word of God says this morning. It says, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him um, that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Hmm. There are two scenarios that we're working with today, and I kind of want you to see it in the text. One is is Jesus God faith in its role that it plays when we come to come together for corporate worship uh, uh, and uh, for the sake of the sermon we're calling that the Sabbath Jesus if you will in fact um, this is where we are most comfortable uh, 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 we're, this is where we're most comfortable nobody argues with the fact that Jesus has authority and is able to define worship nobody argues uh, with the fact that Jesus can tell us how to worship come on somebody he can tell us when to worship he can tell us why to worship and it is in this capacity that we are most comfortable with Jesus in his role and so as we approach the text we notice a couple of things number one we first notice that work is over isn't it a blessing when we come um, to worship when we come to the house of God and the work week is over we can take off our dusty clothes the more work boots we can take off the hairnet or, or or any other thing all the hats of responsibility and we can just sit at Jesus's feet and worship what we notice here uh, is that uh, um, 
the fishermen have washed their nets. The boats are empty. Symbolic, I want to suggest, of the fact that that, that the work week is over. Come on. Uh, 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 and it is time to worship. The second thing that we enjoy about this thing, man, is Jesus is preaching. Come on. Amen. When they saw on the bulletin that Jesus' name was on there, they knew that we were about to have some good church. Amen. Uh, 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 um, uh, they're nothing like coming together for worship, especially when you know that you're going to get some good word after you have laid down the burdens of the week. Amen. Amen. The other thing that we see is uh, in this worship setting is when Jesus is preaching, that he is preaching to everybody. Uh, 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 he's preaching to everybody. And that can be good and bad. You know, every now and then when we're listening to the word of God uh, and we're hearing what the preacher is saying, uh, sometimes he says some stuff that, man, it kind of hit us right here. But, you know, but 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 because we in a crowd, we, we can kind of tell ourselves, well, you know, he's not really talking directly to me. You know what I'm saying? He's talking to them. You know, he, he, uh, and you hear folks say it. They say, tell them, preacher, tell them, preacher. You know, he, hey, man, hey, man. You know, it's, it's nice when we in the crowd because because when Jesus is throwing that stuff out, man, when the word is throwing, coming out, man, it's not necessarily us. Come on. Uh, he is talking to everybody, everybody. Amen. Amen. And the last thing that you see uh, in the text as we have come to it, watch this. And this is what we like about worship, uh, 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 if, if we're real, is that he asked nothing of us. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. The text says that Jesus got in the boat, he sat down, and he simply began to preach. And the people listened. And come on, I, I could imagine, you know, man, uh, 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 in this text, they're preaching pre-corona days, if you will. And I could imagine that, uh, um, that man, they heard that word, that it, man, it was blessed. And probably many of them afterwards went on to the house and, and got them some uh, 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 some steaklets and some gravy and and some apple pie with some bluebell on top, man. And just, hey, man, it wasn't word nice. It was good, man. That Jesus, he laid it down today, you know. Ah, uh, uh, we are most comfortable um, with Jesus. We are most comfortable with worship when it does those things. When we're able to relax, when we hear some good preaching, when when when, it, when it's not coming directly at us, or we can tell ourselves that the word ain't coming directly at us. And if we're honest, when the word asks nothing of us. But I want to suggest, I want to suggest that Monday's coming. Come on, somebody. Monday's coming. And what I want to suggest is that when we talk about Monday, we're talking about the domain where where we get back to work. We're talking about the domain where um, 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 uh, uh, where things are back on us. Uh, we're talking about the domain, if we're honest, where we don't always to expect to see. Hmm. We'll expect to see uh, the promise and the sovereignty of God. Uh, let's go to this part in the text. Here's what it says. It says, um, now when they had left speaking, now when he had left speaking, in other words, church is over, worship is over, come on. When he had left speaking, he said to Simon, I'm talking about Monday's coming, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the i will let down the net we 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 have moved from the worship realm huh we have moved from the worship realm uh, uh we're back into the job we're, we're on monday if you will um uh, uh, uh and what does that look like i want to suggest um, that it is in this capacity that we are less comfortable with faith intruding into our regular lives. Come on, somebody. Um, uh, 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 here's a scenario. Number one, we are back to work. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, it's work time again. Uh, uh, and here's the part where we get a little bit uncomfortable, huh? Uh, 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 in this scenario, we see Jesus showing up in my stuff. Come on now. Um, Peter is a fisherman. Simon is a fisherman. He knows how to fish. He knows what he's doing. And uh, Jesus shows up and, and tries to give him some suggestions on how to do 
fishing when Simon is the fisherman. And, and, and I, I hear us. I hear us. I hear us. We're saying, come on, God. Come on, faith. Come on, church. Come on, Bible. Um, um, Sabbath is your domain. Worship is your domain. This, this right here, this is, this is what I do. This is what I've been trained to do. This is what I've got years of experience to do. Um, um, God, we're very comfortable in sitting and listening to you in the worship domain. But when it comes to the domain uh, in which we are in, uh, then, then we are a little bit less comfortable. Uh, here's the other thing about 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 Monday. Come on, somebody that's a little bit less comfortable than what we experience on Sabbath. And that is this. The crowd is no longer there. Huh? Uh, when Jesus speaks, he is speaking directly to Simon. Huh? Uh, he's telling Simon, look, this is what I want you to do. Uh, 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 when Monday comes and we hear him speak, we, we can no longer suggest that the word is going to somebody else. We we, we can't touch our neighbor and say, uh, 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 tell your neighbor this. No, 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 no. When we hear the word of God, when we hear Jesus speaking to us in the Monday round, come on, somebody. We know that he is talking directly to us and notice here and once we get in this round we notice that there is a little bit of pushback hmm there's a little bit of pushback when in the sabbath realm when jesus asked peter simon to, to launch the ship to push it out you know there was no pushback. There was no discussion. He didn't say, no, this is my boat. No, no, no. Because because we expect in the worship realm, we expect for Jesus to have sovereignty. We expect to, to follow him in what he says. But, <laughs> but when we moved into Monday, huh? When, when Jesus started asking stuff of us in our domain, that's when we are a little bit less comfortable and that's when we get a little bit of pushback and what you notice is is jesus i mean simon says to uh, uh to jesus now you know wait, 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 wait a minute now um this 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 is this is my domain listen we 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 everything you're telling me to do is what i've already done everything you're telling me to do is what i i know to do um, um, you know, you, you, Jesus, respectfully, you, 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 you all up in the Kool-Aid. Come on now. And, uh, and might, might not know the flavor, you know, uh, 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 it is in this round where we are a little bit challenged, but notice, notice, notice that he doesn't, uh, um, just stay there. Uh, he says in verse number five and Simon answering said, master, we toil all night and have taken nothing. Uh, here's the key part. Never the less at thy, at thy word, at thy word, I will let down the net. There, there are a couple of things that I appreciate about this moment that are very real. The first one is um, that you're right. There is a little bit of pushback. Um, what we don't see is Jesus rebuking Simon, striking him down, anything like that. When there's a little bit of pushback, here's what I've learned. Uh, it's all right every now and then if we tell Jesus how we feel. It's okay if we kind of tell him, you know, uh, what's on our hearts, what's on our minds. Uh, and Simon does that. He he. There's a little bit of back and forth. Not not disrespectful, but uh, but he says, you know, Lord, I I you know, and he tells him how he feel. And what I've seen in the Word of God is, uh, and, and I prayers and I whatever that 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 Jesus can tolerate uh, a, a little bit of discussion. You know what I'm saying. Uh, what he can't tolerate is disobedience, but uh, he can tolerate a little bit of discussion. He can tolerate us telling him what's on our mind, what's on our hearts. But at some point, somebody, at some point, there has to be a nevertheless moment, huh? Now, you, you can tell him how you feel. You can tell him what you think. You can tell him what your history, what your pedigree, what your resume says, all of that. But at some point, there needs to be a nevertheless moment. At some point, there needs to be a recognition that although Jesus, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand why you're doing it. I may not even understand how you're doing it. May not agree, but there's one thing that I know. 
And that is that you are God and I'm not. Even though you in my domain, even though you are in the area where, where I'm supposed to be in charge, if you will. What I recognize is you are still God. So nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, Simon says, hmm. Simon says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to obey. Uh, do you have a nevertheless moment, huh? Uh, can you can 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 you not agree with with Jesus and yet still submit to His will? Hmm. Go with me to verse number six. Here's what the text says. He says, "And when they had done this, in other words, when they had gotten past their nevertheless moment, when they had followed, when they had followed the word of God." They enclose a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Hmm. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships, uh, that they should come and help them. Ah, oh, oh, I need you to see that. Please don't miss this. It says, and they beckoned to their partners that were in the other ship. Hmm. Um, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled, here it is, and filled both ships so that they began to sink. Oh, I need you to understand something. Come on, somebody. I need you to understand something. And that is that the reason why we've got to get to know the Monday morning master, huh? Is because the blessing that God has, the lesson that God is trying to teach, um, the power that he's trying to display is not just for you. It's for somebody else. The text says that there was some folk in the other ships and as they begin, as they begin uh, to pull in the great harvest, as they begin to pull in um, the great load that, that, that they got to as a result of following the word of God. The text says that the blessing was so much, that the blessing was so much that they were not that Simon was not able to get it by himself. Him and his boys were not just able to get it and he had to call over over some of the folk that were in the other ships in order to share that blessing. The folk in the other ships got to see the Monday morning master. Oh, come on, somebody. And, and this brings us to our first and a very, very powerful point about the Monday morning master. And that you've got to understand that the reason we've got to allow God to release Jesus out of the worship domain and allow him to follow us back to work, to allow him to follow us back to our place of trial, our place of difficulty, our, 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 our place of domain, if you will, huh? is not just for you, but it is because there are some other folk who are in other ships hmm, who need to know that Jesus is powerful as well. Come on, somebody. There are some folk who who, who may be in a non-denominational ship, if you will. Come on, huh? Uh, uh, they, they don't know him like you know him. But when you allow the Monday morning master to come into your domain and to have sovereignty and to show his blessings, the reason God needs to be there in that domain is because the blessing ain't just for you in your ship, huh? That, that God has a blessing for them in their ship as well. Uh, there may be some folk in a Pentecostal ship. You may have somebody uh, on Monday morning that's in a Muslim ship, if you will. Huh? Uh, 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 and, and God says, listen, I need the folk not just in your boat. I need the folk in all of the ships to know who I am. Am. But you know what? But them folk may not be with you uh, 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 on Sabbath when you worship. They not be might not be sitting in church. They may not be listening to the live stream. That's why I need you to allow me to accompany you to the job on Monday, uh, 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 to the gym on Sunday evening, and to wherever it is that you go. You need to let me come because there's some folk that are in some other ships. Come on, somebody. 
There may be somebody that's on the job with you and they may not be, uh, they may be living in hardship. Come on, somebody. They may be somebody on the job. There may be somebody uh, uh, in the neighborhood who is in a bad relationship. There are some folk in some other ships and, and, and God says, the reason I need you to let me be Monday morning master is because when you obey me and when you allow me to send my blessings through you, the bounty is going to be so much. There won't be room enough to receive it that the blessings that I sent through you will begin to filter into some of those other ships because I need them to know that I am God as well. Mm. It's not just for you. It's for other folk as well. And that's why he has to not just be the worship leader on Sabbath. That's why he can't just be the one who tells us what to do in the worship domain. But we have to allow God to be sovereign and God to be master in every place that we find ourselves. Because it's not just for us. But I want you to notice here. But notice what it does for us. Yes, God is trying to send blessings to, to other folk as well. But, but there is something that happens for us when we see the Monday morning master. Here's what the text says. It says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man Oh, Lord. Oh, I need you to see this. Pete, Peter was no doubt there when Jesus uh, preached that word from the ship. Huh? Peter was there, if you will, uh, with the, the Sabbath, uh, 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 the Sabbath Jesus, if you will. Heard the word that everybody heard, no doubt. Uh, it blessed him, but it did not awe him. It did not cause him to bow down in, in humble adoration. Watch this. But when Jesus stepped into Peter's domain, took over Peter's stuff, <laughs> and he saw his power over the area where he was supposed to be knowledgeable, where he was supposed to be powerful, the text says that he fell down at his feet. <laughs> And acknowledged his sinfulness and began to worship. And I want to suggest that the reason why some of us haven't really worshipped, the reason why some of us haven't written is, is because all we see is the worship Jesus. All we see is the one to whom we come and hear a nice message and, and then go home and go about our regular businesses. I want to suggest that when we begin to allow Christ to be Lord over every day, huh? when we allow him, come on somebody, when we allow him to, 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 to manage Monday and, and take over Tuesday, when, when, when we now allow him uh, to work it out on Wednesday, Wednesday and, and thrust himself into Thursday, when we allow him to fix Friday, if you will, then we have the possibility of having an awe-inspired worship experience every day because we have seen the God who is powerful at all times and in all places. Hmm. So the question, the question, the question as we sit now is, what are we to do with this Monday morning master? What are we to do with this Monday morning master? And you might say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, <clears throat> there are two possibilities. You see, when you and the folk in the other ship see what Jesus is able to do on Monday, when you see what he can do in your business life and in your financial life and in your whatever, there is a tendency and a temptation to try to separate Jesus from his salvific work and put him into the domain of the secular. huh? 
and, and one of the things that I see more and more is even religious folk and religious entities that they don't preach so much the the Sabbath Jesus. They don't preach the Jesus whose whose work and occupation and domain, whose primary concern is the salvation of souls. Because they have seen his power, because they have seen the Monday morning master, if you will, the, the, the focus seems to be on on, on, on keeping him busy with those types of activities, huh? Uh, that there are our folk, and, and our natural tendency is to say, "Well, Jesus, if you can do like that, man, uh, 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 then I need to keep you busy on the fishes and loaves, huh?" Ah, there are folk who, 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 who their main pursuit with Jesus is what he can do in the blessing realm in the secular. And we hear folk uh, are focused totally on that. Uh, your blessing, your breakthrough. Uh, God is going to give you the promotion. God is going to give you the big house and the fancy car. There is that temptation. In fact, we saw this kind of temptation when folk encountered the Monday morning master, if you will, all throughout his ministry. The Bible tells us that Jesus had fed 5,000. And, and it even wasn't so much the folk, uh, but the, the disciples were impressed, huh? The disciples were impressed when they saw uh, this mess so much so that the text says that they were just about ready to make him king. And Jesus had to allow a storm to come because when they saw the Monday morning master, when they saw the one uh, uh, who's able uh, to take over the secular and not only provide words of inspiration, but also is able to bless your, 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 your money, to bless your income, to bless your business, to bless your endeavors. They tried to keep him right there. Hmm. Just because Jesus can manage your Monday doesn't mean that his primary concern is your Monday. In fact, notice what the text says as we begin to make our way uh, towards our close this morning. We are not going to be long. The Bible says in verse 10, and his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Notice, notice, I'm talking about what, what are we to do with this Monday morning master? And Jesus replied to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing. You're going to be fishing for people. Oh, I need you to see this. Hmm. What we tend to do is we tend to try to pull the Monday morning master and only have him to be relevant in Monday. And only we're only concerned about the secular, about the uh, about the financial, about these types of things. <laughs> Jesus does the opposite. He said, yeah, you've seen the Monday morning master. But what I want to do uh, uh, is to partner with you in the Sabbath morning ministry. What Jesus tells not only Simon Peter, uh, but James and John is the same type of thing you saw me do in the secular. I want to invite you to join me in that. Hmm. I want you to join me in that. In the sacred. Huh? Jesus said, listen, listen. Yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do the blessing thing. Yes, I can do the enlarge your territory thing. But I need you to understand that my first and foremost and primary concern is what you saw me doing in the ship on Sabbath. Come on. Is what you saw me doing in that word. And if you really going to be a worshiper of me, if you're really going to be a follower of me, if you're really going to be a disciple of me, what that entails is not pulling me exclusively into Monday, but me partnering with you. In the in the sacred, I'm a I'm a Seventh Day Adventist Christian. I was born uh, 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 into this faith tradition, and uh, um, um, and one of the things that's very interesting is um, for people who are not familiar with uh, 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 our faith, um, especially you know in the South, sometimes you know. 
folk can 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 have a hard time with our name. I'm not sure why. Maybe because they don't see it everywhere. And so I, I've seen folk call us all kinds of stuff. Uh, in fact, sometimes the stuff that they call us, even though it's incorrect, it, it probably should be part of our mission, huh? I, I've seen folk call us the the Seventh Day Adventurers. Come on, somebody say, man. And, and for folk who 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 who, who can, can 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 show up, make religion dry at times. I've heard that, man. And I've said, man, you know what? That ain't right. But <laughs> but maybe we really should be Seventh Day Adventurers. Come on, somebody. Maybe we should uh, 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 have a little bit more adventure in what we do for God and with God. But but there is one name mess up that that even though it's messed up, it, it probably uh, is the most challenging and the most representative of really what God wants us to be. And that is when folk call us them seven day evangelists. Come on somebody, huh? seven day evangelists. And what I need you to understand is after the Monday morning master did this miracle, what he essentially does is he tells Peter and James and John, I'm gonna make you seven day evangelists, huh? I, 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 I'm gonna transform you from being fishers of people, excuse me, to being fishers of men, huh? Seven day evangelists. Mm, somebody might say, somebody might say, preacher, come on, man. You know, um, I, I just don't know how to do that. I, 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 I can't, I, I can't. I don't know how to win anybody to Jesus. I don't know how to do whatever. I want to close with just four things that I learned from this word today. Four things that I learned from this, this message today. Uh, uh, and they are these. Number one, one of the things that we learned today is that we see Jesus' power and sovereignty. That they extend to all places and all times. Hmm. Jesus was not just a master of verse and prose and and, 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 and and lyric and message. But he was also able to handle the ordinary concerns of life. Hmm. Jesus was just as powerful on Sabbath, if you will, just as powerful with the word as he was with the fishes and the loaves, if you will. The second thing that we learn, the second thing that we learn um, is not just Jesus's power in this area, but our inadequacy extends to all times and places. Hmm. When we say, Lord, we don't know how. In reality, we are correct. But what, what this passage shows us and what Jesus is trying to show us is it's not just that we are inadequate in the realm of the spiritual. <laughs> in the area that you think you're supposed to be the master of. Jesus says, man, you are inadequate there as well. And that's why. And that's why he says, I'm trying to partner with you uh, in that area as well. Jesus is offering us permanent partnership in all times and places what jesus is saying is man if you partner with me i, I can not only make you i can not only make you uh, successful in the spiritual realm i can not only make you a fisher of men but but i can make you a, a, a successful fisher of fish as well oh when we say uh, or when we claim that inadequacy, uh, it is because we're just not inadequate in what we're inadequate in all places without the power of Jesus. That's why he began that challenge by saying, fear not, huh? Fear not from this point. I will make you fishers of men. Jesus showed them their, their, their actual situation which is not just without him, they could not be fishers of men, but what the text says, without me, you can do nothing. But with me, come on somebody, we can do it all. Ah, 
in order for this last point, I need you to see the last verse that we're going to deal with today. And that is verse number 11. The Bible says, and when they had brought their boats to land, their boats to land, you know, that's where they make their money. They left everything and followed and followed him. Hmm. Last point for today is this. In order for us to be permanent partners with Jesus in all times and in all places, we must be willing to offer up everything and willing to leave anything, huh? Oh, they thought they were fishermen. They they thought they were the ones who were able to uh, 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 to, to knew how to fish. And Jesus showed them, man, without me, you can do nothing. He offered them partnership, but they could not be partners with him while continuing to do what they did. And so the boats, the ones that almost uh, tossed over because he had blessed so much, what they understood is, if you can do that with the fish, if you can do that with me on the job, if I stick with you, I can live those same kind of miracles in every, in every aspect of life. The reality is if we're going to be partners with God, we got to be willing, willing, willing to offer everything and leave anything. Now, here's what I can't tell you. I can't tell you that he's going to tell you like Peter, James, and John to leave your job, to leave your whatever. I cannot tell you that. But what I, what I can say is that we have to have a willingness to understand that whatever he asks me to do, I must be willing to do because he's shown me his power in every in every aspect of life. The question for the day is, is do you desire the Monday morning master? Huh? Because the reality is there are two alternatives today. The one alternative is to simply do the religion where, where we're not awed, where we're not changed, where we, uh, where we can just uh, 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 listen for a minute and just, just go back to the way we were doing things. Huh? Uh, the kind of faith that we, 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 it doesn't change and transform our lives. We, it doesn't bless other people. It doesn't awe us. It's just, it's just nice. Or we can be partners with Jesus in his power, working with him to fill out the thing that matters to the master most. My prayer is, is that you, like Peter and James and John, will be willing to be permanent partners with the Monday morning master. If that's you, won't you pray this prayer with me today? Heavenly Father, God, we have been most comfortable in just leaving you in one domain, in one aspect of our lives, Lord God. But Lord, what we've seen in the text and what we've seen in our experience, God, is that when we do that, God, that we only see one aspect of you. But mostly, God, that in a lot of situations, we remain unchanged. But God, we see you, we hear you, we hear your invitation, Lord God, to be partners with you in all places and in all times. And God, although it makes us nervous, although it makes us a little bit afraid, God, we want to say in this moment that we are willing to offer up anything, God, and to give up everything if necessary to be followers of you. God, we only ask, Lord, that you speak in tones that are clear that we may be able to hear and that you honor that promise that says you'll never leave us or forsake us. God, somebody is, is making a decision for you right now, God. And we ask that you would, would just affirm to them, God, that you accept them as partners. And offering, Lord God, to take them on the ride, not just of a lifetime, 
oh God, but the ride of eternity. Bless us, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you um, invited God to be your permanent partner and you uh, and you want uh, to live your life with the Monday morning master, the one uh, that's able to work miracles, not only in the religious domain, but also uh, in every aspect of your life. Won't you let us know about your decision? Text the word decision to 601 258 4040. It'll take you through some prompts. And we'll see if you want Bible studies or, uh, or want special prayer or looking for baptism. Here's what I can tell you. And that is that the God of heaven is not only powerful in the religious, but he is powerful in every aspect of your life. That he can partner with you uh, to not only fill up your ship, come on somebody, but also uh, to fill up the ships of others who are close by just because you surrendered to him. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for blessing us in the word today. We thank you for decisions that have been made today, God. Take us from this place, never from your presence. And when we show up at wherever we're supposed to be on Monday, help us to make sure that we take you with us. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. God bless you. Come on, everybody.